Okay, you ready? I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I can work this out. Hello, everyone. You'd think that by now, after all these months, I would have this down pat. Well, my friends, let me tell you something. I don't have it down pat. I normally have my camera up here. So if you see me looking up here and not looking at the camera, that's why. But my camera at the moment is down here. <laughs> so that's where I got to remember to look. And it's a little bit dark there. It's not as good a camera. So that was what I was having problems with. And I had to restart it and whatnot. But I'm very happy. We haven't got a large crowd, <laughs> but Candace, we know that if there's any possibility that you'll be here, and Dominic, I also know that um, you have been extremely busy with uh, your work in the gospel. So that's uh, fully understandable that you haven't been able to make it every time. And that's really why I uh, do the um, the recordings that I do, to make it easier for everyone. And so what we're going to be looking at is one of my very favorite topics uh, today. It's the, the topic of baptism. Uh, of course, important for every single one of us. Uh, and we love uh, looking at this idea of baptism. But remember what we're, what we're looking at. We're looking specifically at those things that can be difficult to teach. So what are some of the, um, uh, the things that we need to remember about baptism? And what are some of the things that are brought up against baptism today? It, it's sad, but it's true. And unfortunately, there are people today that still hold against uh, the truth of baptism. Baptism is throughout the Bible. We are really, we, we ought not to be surprised in the slightest about uh, what, uh, what baptism uh, teaches, uh, or what the Bible teaches on baptism, because right throughout the New Testament, now while, of course, one of the, the things that we could talk about is John's baptism. Now, we don't believe that we are baptized with John's baptism, but he was a, a, a forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in John's baptism, at least we know and we can see clearly the type uh, that baptism is, the mode of baptism. It's immersion in water. We can see that from the very beginning of the New Testament, as John uh, crashes onto the scene as a as a prophet in the in, in the same type as uh, Elijah was, and all the way through it, we can see it. So, I'm going to ask. Let me see who we got. Okay, greetings, Jackson and Martin. Glad that you can join us, but. I can see Dominic's got his video up. Lovely to see you, my friend. Uh, would you like to open and uh, 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 unmute and open with a prayer for us, please? Sure. Let's, yeah. uh, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much because of this beautiful day that you have made for us. We thank you because of the brethren here who have made their efforts and sacrificed their time to come and study together your word. This is the only place we should belong, to always look for you and understand more about you when we all come together and fellowship through studies. We thank you because of our teacher, Brother Keith, who has dedicated and committed his time to be with us and always be ready to encourage us. Lord, I pray as we delve into the study of baptism, you're going to be with us from the beginning to the end. And Lord, it's going to be fruitful to us and also make us to spread the same to other brothers and sisters across the world. We thank you because of those who have not even joined 
Lord, you will enable them to view the videos after this. And Lord, those who have joined, Lord, we pray for consistency that, Lord, you will give us time and also the resources that will make us continue to study together. We pray that, Lord, you will continue to give us strength because you can do love for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that lovely prayer. Okay, so baptism. I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to show you something that uh, I, I just find fascinating. Let me, let me share. Okay. Nope, not that. Not that. But close to that. Here we go. That's what I want. That's what I want. Uh, okay. Now, here, this is a historical document uh, that is, is kind of unique. You notice what we have here is on Sunday, the 25th of February, 1962, uh, at the St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, I, was, uh, I received this uh, certificate of baptism. Now, the, uh, the fact of the matter is this uh, Reverend David R., I don't even know what that is, Stewan, I don't know, a minister of the United Church of Central Africa in Rhodesia, Ndola. He didn't baptize me. He sprinkled water on top of my head, something that, no one can see in the in the Bible anywhere something that is foreign to the scriptures, something that uh, has has invaded many or uh, many different churches around the Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, the Anglican Church, Lutherans, Presbyterians. Methodists, United Church, they all uh, um, perform this. In, in, in theological uh, um, jargon, it's called pedo-baptism. Pedo is the Greek term for children. It's child baptism. Uh, and these people, we'll, we'll close it. That's not, it's not really an important document, but I just thought it'd be fun to share it. Uh, uh, these people who who claim this uh, pedo baptism, uh, they try and go to the scriptures for it. For instance, you remember uh, when Paul was uh, traveling uh, and he went to he had the the um, the uh, Macedonian call and he had this vision of a man from Macedonia said, come over here and preach to us also. And he went over, he went down to the riverside and he found a group of, of uh, Jewish women there uh, and they were gathered for prayer. Uh, and, and, and Lydia and her family were, uh, were, were baptized. And so this is one of their proof texts. It's not a very good proof text as we'll look at it in a minute. It says, verse 14. And Lydia, uh, a uh, sorry, and a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, uh, a seller of purple fabrics, a worshiper of God, was listening. And the Lord opened her heart to respond to the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household had been baptized, she urged us, saying, "If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and 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 stay." Now, of course. What uh, what the, the 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 text that is used here is the fact that uh, she and all of her household were baptized, and they say, well, there must have been children in the household, therefore we uh, accept child baptism. Well, that's a pretty big jump in logic if you think about it. There are no children in my house. Uh, and there are a lot of households that was uh, uh, do not have children in. But uh, notice, the Lord opened her heart to respond to the things said by uh, said by Paul. 
uh, there has to be some sort of response. A child can't do that. They, they also go on to Act chapter uh, 18 with uh, um, the baptism of the, let's go, baptism of the Ethiopian, uh, well, Crispus, this Ethiopian eunuch is, is another one. Uh, Crispus, the leader of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with all his household. And many of the uh, many of the Corinthians, when they heard it, believed and were baptized. So, what they what they say is that uh, because the whole household was baptized, therefore children can be baptized. And I think we can all see that this is a a, a pretty poor uh, stage of. Uh, of logic, isn't it? It lacks any any real Bible understanding or study whatsoever. Uh, so, Martin Luther. Let me read a quote from Martin Luther. Of course, he was uh, one of the great reformers, but also he was a believer in infant baptism. And he wrote, "It is taught among us that since the fall of Adam, all men who were born according to the course of nature." are conceived and born in sin. That is, all men are fully evil, lust in, uh, and inclinations from their mother's wombs, uh, and are unable by nature to have true fear of God and true faith in God. Moreover, this inborn sickness is hereditary sin. It is it, truly sin and condemns to eternal wrath of God all those who are not born again through baptism and the Holy Spirit. Rejected in this connection are the Pelagians who deny that original sin is sin. And for they hold that the nature of man is right, made righteous by his own power, thus disparaging the suffering and merit of Christ. Now, I find this very interesting quote because he's wrong in both of the arguments he's making. He's trying to appear to be uh, level-headed uh, and showing the other side of the the, the um the, the the argument these the, these group of pe people that he calls the Pelagians, uh, he what so what Martin Luther said was that all humans are innately sinful from the moment that they are born. They are sick, as sick with sin from their mother's wombs. Now the Pelagians, uh, according to him, anyway, he says that they're made righteous by their own power. But the Bible says neither of these things. The Bible tells us uh, that the uh, that sin is transgression of the law. It tells us that we we are guilty of sin not when we're born. In fact, Jesus said, "Unless we become like little children, we cannot enter the kingdom of God." And it's only when we commit sin that we are guilty. And, and then we can do nothing about it in and of ourselves. Our righteousness is not by our own powers. Now, that's what Luther said, the Pelagians. I don't know about the Pelagians. But we are not made righteous by our own power. We are made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. We do not earn our salvation, which, of course, is one of the arguments that are made against the people that believe in the regeneration of baptism. Okay, so now, so let, what does the Bible teach about infant baptism? We're going to go where I, I was jumping ahead in my mind. We're going to go to Acts chapter 16, and we're going to have a look at... Uh, 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 at what the Bible says, yeah, Acts 16, and we're going to start in verse 11. Uh, okay. Here we go. Okay. So, verse 11. So, putting out from sea from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samothrace. And on the day following to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which was the leading city of the district of Macedonia, a Roman colony, and was staying in this city for some days. 
And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to a riverside, and we're supposed to be a place of prayer, and we sat down and began to speak with the women who had assembled. A woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple fabrics, a worshiper of God, was listening, and the Lord opened her heart and responded to the things spoken of by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, if you have judged me faithful, uh, to be faithful in the Lord, come into my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. Okay, so this is the introduction to this passage. We need to keep going there. Uh, verse 16. As it happened that as we were going to the place of prayer, a slave girl having a spirit of divination met us, who was bringing her masters much profit and fortune telling. Following after Paul and us, she kept crying out, saying, These men are bond servants of the Most High God, who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. She continued doing this for many days. But Paul was greatly annoyed and turned and said in the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of it. And it came out of her that very moment. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. And when they brought them uh, to the chief magistrates, they said, these men are throwing the city into confusion being Jews and are proclaiming customs to which it is not lawful for us to accept or observe being Romans. The crowds rode, rose up against them and the chief magistrates tore their robes off them and proceeded to order them to be beaten with rods. When they struck them with many blows, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. And he, having received such a command, threw them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks. Verse 25. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there came a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm yourself for we are all here. And he called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now I'm going to pause there. That's a lengthy reading, but it's a wonderful reading. I think you'll agree with me there. The Philippian jailer, uh, he was a Roman citizen. He was a heathen. He would worship all sorts of gods. He had no idea of the one true God and certainly of Jesus Christ, but he had seen the power of God in that earthquake. And he knew in himself there must be something he had to do. Now, of course, infant baptism, the infant doesn't have to do anything. It's adults that do it for them. But he asked, what must I do to be saved? Now, verse 31, look, people get this mixed up, but we'll see exactly what this is all about now. And they said, believe in the Lord and you will be saved, you and the household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him together with all who were in his household. And he took them that very hour of the night, washed their wounds, and immediately he was baptized he and all his household. And he brought them into his house and set food before them and rejoiced greatly, having believed in God with his whole household. Now, notice, at the end of this story, we have the Luke, the, the historian, telling us that, yes, they believed. Remember, what he had to do, he had to believe. Now, what people will say, you know, when they're not talking about pedo, about what, infant baptism, they'll say, well, you just have to agree in your mind. But no, a belief in Jesus Christ, just like he says, believe in the Lord Jesus is more than just mental agreement. Because we have to believe that Jesus is the Christ. 
the Lord, the King of Kings, and we obey what he says. Now, okay, let's go back to what we were saying about infant baptism. The fact of the matter is that a baby can't believe. You, you, know, you can't have it every way. You can't have it every way. What the, the Bible clearly says that before baptism, there needs to be belief. We could go elsewhere and see where the, the, that belief includes other things like repentance and confession. Uh, but before baptism, you have to believe, and a baby simply can't believe. Now, now I, I find it, I find it really, really fascinating. I'll, I'll go back to. Uh, I'll stop this share and go back to to this. Uh, I find it fascinating that I had this right. Now we'll call it baptism, but it was just sprinkling in February the twenty fifth, nineteen sixty two. Now, why? <laughs> now, my parents, they were good parents. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't understand the gospel at that stage. But why was I had water sprinkled on them? Because I was born, now you can work out the maths, in August the 23rd, 1960. They waited a year and a half for me to be what they call baptized. I just think, I think that's fascinating. And there, there's no answer to it. Both of my parents are gone now. And so, and I'm certainly not worried about it because in 1984, uh, I believe it would have been in November, I was baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of my sins. Okay, so let, let's leave off this idea of uh, child baptism or pedo baptism, and let's just have a look at what the Bible does teach. We're going to go over to Mark chapter 16. If you have your Bibles turned there, uh, Ma Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. And this is a well-known passage. And... Uh, Deeply loved by us all, I'm sure. Okay. Here we are. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized will be saved. He who has disbelieved will be condemned. You know, I got to wonder if when Paul was teaching the Philippian jailer what he had to do to be saved, did he use this verse or these verses? I believe he did, because this is exactly what he taught him. Now, I remember, I remember, oh, it was probably in 19, oh, no, 2010. I was in Arusha, Tanzania, uh, and I asked this young boy whose father just could not accept the truth of this verse. I asked this little boy to read this verse, and I then asked him, what two things did Jesus tell us we have to do to be saved? And this nine-year-old boy, I think he was nine, he said, you have to believe and you have to be baptized. His father just put his hands on his head and shook his head. Unfortunately, he never followed the advice, the wisdom of his son. But I had the very same thing last Sunday. Our newest member, a man by the name of Lee Sanders, had invited a friend. Uh, her name's Cassandra. And she was saying that she was having trouble just understanding what the Bible said. And I said, well, we just have to read it and accept what it says, not adding to it or taking away. And I got her to read these two verses. And I asked her the very same question. So what does Jesus say are the two things we have to do to be saved? She said, you have to believe and be baptized. Well, 
Lord willing, she'll be coming on Sunday uh, to worship. And we're very hopeful that she will. Okay, now parallel passage, we see that both passages dealing with the Great Commission is in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. And Jesus came up to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Uh, verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now you see, this is uh, teaches us uh, or, or builds on what we just found out in the in the Mark passage. So this going in Mark it says, go and preach the gospel to all creation. So this is what he they have to do: make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. Yeah, it's the same in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now this is a, a, a chant that we have to say: in the name of means by the authority. And you'll notice in. Uh, 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 in the book of Acts, people were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. They have the same authority. It's not the case as a different baptism. It's the same baptism. Then there's this teaching to observe. After baptism, we have to teach those uh, who have been baptized because they have to remain faithful in all that we have to say, so Jesus said, go therefore and uh, preach baptism. What did, what did Peter say? So let's go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 and see what the apostle Peter said. Uh, 38, I think 28. Okay, 38. And Peter said to them, repent and let each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Aha! In the name of. Okay, we talked about that. Now, he tells us what baptism is for. The forgiveness of your sins. That's what baptism is for. Peter didn't preach anything different. He preached exactly the same as Jesus preached. Now, let's have a look at... Uh, Oh, what we read in, in 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, verse 21. 1 Peter 3. Well, let's go back. Let's go back. Okay. Uh, are you going to go? Okay. For Christ died also for our sins, verse 18, once for all, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made proclamation to the spirits now in prison, who were once disobedient when the patience of God was kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark, in which few, that is eight persons, were brought, brought through, uh, through safely through the water. Corresponding to the, that, baptism now saves us, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He preached exactly the same. Uh, what did, what did uh, Philip the evangelist say in Acts 8 and verse 36? Uh, it says there he was, he, was, he was teaching the Ethiopian nobleman. As they went along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Exactly the same as Jesus taught. And what did the Apostle Paul say? And we've already looked at this. Acts chapter 16 and verse 30. Uh, and after he brought them out, this is the, the Philippian jailer, he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus uh, and you'll be saved, you and your household. And we know what happened next. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him uh, together with all who were in his house. And he took them that very hour of the night and washed their wounds. And immediately he was baptized with 
uh, baptized with all, and, and he was baptized, he and all his household. Excuse me. Okay, now, we need to recognize what uh, the mode of baptism is. We need to recognize what uh, it takes to be baptized. Uh, and we can see that uh, if, we, if we look at the very, very word that is used for uh for baptism okay hang on a second something's gone wrong with all my all my stuff so the text i was going to show you was just teeny tiny okay so that'll that'll do that'll do okay Okay, now the word is baptisma. Okay, don't worry about don't worry about what the Greek has there, but this is the, the baptisma. And we can see that this is not a word that is translated from the from the from the English. This is a Greek word. Well, you, you can kind of see what it is. Uh, this is the B, the A sound, this is the, the P sound, the pi. Uh, remember from your school, this is the T sound, baptism, that's the S, M, and an A name, baptisma. And it means immersion, submersion. It's, it's immersion in water. Baptism is immersion in water. We, we have this, this word that, unfortunately, many people... Uh, mistranslate at the, they, they use water but like me when I was a little baby uh, I wasn't immersed in water but I had just a little bit of water sprinkled on us now we have we, we, we looked at the uh, the the Ethiopian uh, yeah the Ethiopian nobleman Let's go and look a little bit further into that because we get a great picture of baptism there. So it's in Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 37. And we've read this 37. Uh, and Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop. Uh, and they both went down into the water. Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when he came up out of the water, uh, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no uh, no longer saw him, but went on his way rejoicing. Now, let's let's replace this word baptize, and, and we can see here to dip to immerse in uh, in that little uh, um, uh, dictionary there. Let, let's just uh, change that to, to immerse. What was it? Okay. He ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he immersed him. We can see that. They were both in the water. And not very many people uh, think that Jesus had water sprinkled on him. And clearly, this was not the case here. Baptism is immersion in water. So that's the, that's the first. We need the proper mode. Well, we also need the proper authority. What is the authority? Well, we've already spoken about this, uh, but we'll remind ourselves in Matthew chapter 28 uh, and verse 19. It says, go therefore and baptize uh, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is a God-given command. The authority that is given is the authority of God. Now we can see this. We've, we've noticed this elsewhere, but we're going to go to the household of Cornelius uh, and Acts 10 and verse 48. Uh, let's, go, let's go a little back 
uh, here. Verse 47, surely no one can refuse water for these to be baptized, to have received the Holy Spirit just as we did, can he? And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay for a few days. By being baptized in the name of, or by the authority of Jesus Christ, is the proper authority. So the proper mode, water. The proper authority, Jesus Christ. What is the proper purpose? Well, again, we're just covering territory we've covered already. Acts 2 and verse 38. Uh, Peter said, repent and let each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Baptism is for the forgiveness of sins. We can see this in Acts 22 and verse 16. When, uh, when uh, Saul of Tarsus, uh, who became the Apostle Paul, was baptized, uh, Ananias sang to him, and he said, the God of our fathers has appointed you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear an utterance from his mouth, for you will be a witness for him to all men of what you have seen and heard. Now, why do you de uh, delay? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Okay, now, so we had the, the, the proper mode is water. The proper authority is from God. The proper uh, purpose is for the forgiveness of sins. The proper subjects, who are the ones who can be baptized? Well, where we started in, in Mark 16 and verse 16. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. He who disbelieves will be condemned. Only a believer can be baptized. And so, okay, time for our video now. So let me get that up. For a video on baptism, I of necessity had to go somewhere where there was much water. So this is this is the place where if we're going to baptize people outside, this is where, where I do most of my baptisms. Okay, here we go. Hello, my name is Keith Thompson. I'm with the Armadale Church of Christ. And today our video is about baptism. There's a lot of confusion about baptism and what baptism is and what baptism is for. The way to understand this subject is to go back to the Bible. And so that's what we're going to go to do today. We're going to start in Acts chapter 8, and we're going to be reading about the work of Philip uh, and the conversion of an Ethiopian nobleman. Now, Philip had been sent out to this man by the Holy Spirit, and he found him reading the book of Isaiah, specifically uh, prophecies from Isaiah about Jesus. And this Ethiopian man was confused about what he was reading. So he asked Philip to explain it for him. So we pick up the, the, the passage in Acts chapter 8 in verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning from this scripture, he preached Jesus to him. And as they went along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. And this is a wonderful passage that, in which we can see how the baptism of this man took place. So, having learnt about Jesus, this Ethiopian eunuch, the first thing he says, he says, look, water, what prevents me from being baptized? Now, we're here today at Rolly Pools and Rolly Stone in Western Australia, and I've been privileged to baptize a number of people here. And so, what prevents one from being baptized? Well, the answer 
that Philip gave was, if you believe with your heart, you may. And so then the eunuch said these wonderful words. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This is the Great Commission. And with that, the chariot was ordered to be stopped. They both got out of the chariot. It says, they both went down into the water and Philip baptized him. Now, there's an awful lot in this passage, but I want to just look at this idea of what baptism is. It's an interesting word. It's not a word that's been translated out of the original language, Greek, but rather transliterated. It's been given an English sound to it. The original word is baptismo, and it means to emerge or submerge. It means going under the water. And we can see this in this case. When the baptism came, they both got out of the chariot, they both went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. This is what Christian baptism is. It's not pouring of water, it's not sprinkling of water, but it's immersion in water. The Bible talks about it being a burial, and we're going to look at that later on in the study. Let's now go and look to Acts chapter 2 and see there where, what the Apostle Peter says about baptism. In Acts chapter 2, Peter is preaching to the Jews gathered there, and he preaches to them about Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. And we pick up the passage in Acts 2 and verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they, were, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? Peter had told them that they had crucified the Messiah, the Christ that they were waiting for, and they were pierced to the heart. As, as Jesus was pierced in the side, they felt this same pain. They felt that they were pierced to their heart because they had done this terrible thing, and they said, what must we do? And here's the answer. Notice what Peter says in verse 38. Peter said to them, repent and let each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. These people had believed. Uh, we can see that by their reaction to what Peter had been preaching. They were pierced to the heart. And so what was left for them to do? They had to repent. That means turning around from a sinful life and following Jesus. And he says, you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, that means by the authority of Jesus Christ. It's Jesus' baptism. John's baptism, which many of them may have had, wasn't good enough. They had to be baptized with Jesus' baptism. And notice, it's for the forgiveness of sins. How do we have our sins forgiven? How does the Bible teach us that we have our sins washed away? Well, it's in baptism. Christ's baptism is for the forgiveness of sins. And when we submit to baptisms, to baptism rather, our sins are forgiven. Let's have a look at what Peter says in Romans chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 3 and 4 here. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Now here, Paul reiterates what baptism is for. He says in verse 4 that those of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death. Well, what did Jesus die for? He died for forgiveness of sins. And we just read in Acts 2, 38, that's what we're baptized for. We're baptized for the forgiveness of sins. But Jesus wasn't just killed on the cross. He then was taken from the cross 
and he was buried. Notice in verse 4. Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death. You see, as Christ was buried in the tomb and he was there for three days, we are buried in the waters of baptism. That's why it's immersion. You don't bury someone just by sprinkling sand on them or pouring a little bit of soil on top of them. No, they are buried. And that's why immersion is what baptism is. We're buried in water. But Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. And we don't stay buried. Notice uh, the rest of verse 4. So that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might walk in a newness of life. On the third day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb and found it empty. And then Mary Magdalene was the first one to see the risen Lord. He told her to go and tell the rest of the disciples. Jesus had risen to a new life. When we are baptized into Christ, we are baptized for the forgiveness of sins. We are buried with Christ and we rise up out of the waters to walk in a new life. Why? Because our sins have been forgiven. We become just like a little baby, pure and innocent, because we no longer have any sins. Now the devil has confused baptism. Many people think that they're baptized, but they haven't been baptized in Christ's baptism. Now, we welcome questions here on this channel. If you have any questions, put them in the comment sections below and we'll get right back to you. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, why don't you like and subscribe? We make videos every week and we look forward to you taking part of them. Thank you for your time now. and Lord willing, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Okay. Now, there's the video. I wanted to show you something. Now, uh, before that, I'd like to uh, introduce you and welcome my dear friend Adil and his family. They are uh, viewing from Pakistan, and so we're very happy to welcome them here. But I wanted to uh, to share with you some photos of the same place uh, and the baptisms that I, some of the baptisms that I've conducted there. Now there's there's a lot of photos here, and I haven't gone through them. But uh, this is this is quite a while ago. Uh, but uh, oh, I don't know what's happening. Okay, this is this is this is uh, another baptism, and this is just recently I baptized Lee Sanders. I mentioned I mentioned him at the very beginning. So this is his baptism. <laughs> and you see that I want you to notice when I baptize people I make sure that they are fully immersed you see that this is this is the process and once he's fully immersed I just hold them under for like one second but I check you can see I've turned my head I'm looking and then I rise him up and he walks in newness of life you can see how how happy he is there. <laughs> ah, well, that makes me very happy to be able to share those with you. Yeah. Okay. So now, as is usual, what uh, I do now, this is the time where you can make comments or ask questions. You're very happy to, to do that. And I can see a hand gone up very quickly. You got to be getting up pretty early in the morning to beat Dominic. He's number one. Go ahead, Dominic. <laughs> Thank you so, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this good topic of baptism. As we handle um, this, as always, we continue with these um, lessons of the most hardest topics that we can teach. We we have come to baptism and one of the one of the many questions we receive or you might also have heard about this is people asking 
which kind of water should we baptize people into? Is it a running water like Jesus did in Jordan? Is it um, constant water? And we can see um, uh, good examples that you have shared, like the Ethiopian Union, which um, it, uh, I, uh, it was a desert. And um, I don't think if that water was running or what was constant. And so would you kindly clarify what yeah. we should respond to such people? Yeah, and, and I, th I, think you, I think you've got the answer there. In, uh, in the baptisms of the Bible, we see the people in all sorts of different places. They were baptized in the Jordan River. They were baptized in what we would say would be an oasis in the desert. It certainly wouldn't have been flowing. It was just sitting there. Uh, they were baptized in Jerusalem. Now, there is no river in Jerusalem they would have. They had these pools there, like the pool of Siloam Sil Sil there in different places. When people were baptized in Jerusalem, they could not have been baptized in running water. So we get this variety of different places. So, and in no place is the water or the quality of the water mentioned. What we're told is that we have to be immersed. It has to be in water. It has to be in, in the authority or in Christ's name by his authority. And it has to be someone who is a believer. Those four things. Now, when you get, get your notes, you'll see that that's the last point I make, the 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 the, the 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 four different and how did I, how did I put it um, four different elements the proper mode water immersion in water the proper authority in the name of the proper purpose for the forgiveness of sins and the proper subject the water the quality of the water isn't mentioned. And so you're on the right track. Have a look, show them. You can show them in different places. And uh, and that's the answer. I know uh, in, uh, in Kuala Lumpur, it's a, a difficult situation there because uh, Jackson lives in a, in a Muslim country like uh, Dill uh, does here. Uh, and um, it's, it can be dangerous to do a baptism outside. Uh, so they have a baptismal uh, that they have. It's a, like, a, like a, a plastic, kind of like a kid, kid's pool that they set up uh, when they have to do a baptism and they fill that with water uh, and they do it in the back of the building. Other, other, other churches, they have their own building. They have a, a baptismal built into the building. Uh, we... We we go down to uh, to this uh, uh, pool now that is running in summer in winter it doesn't run uh, but if there's an old person who can't get down there I don't take them I don't drag them down there because it's running water I'll take them to a swimming pool and baptize them in a swimming pool but that's a great question very good. Okay, anyone else? Okay, now I see I, I see Adil, you've got yourself unmuted. Let's go with you first and then Martin. Okay. You're welcome, Adil. Okay, ask your question. Okay, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. Your microphone isn't working. Okay, you try to get that up. I'll go over to Martin and come back to you, okay? Okay, maybe unplug and plug it in again. Okay, where you go, Martin? Thank you, brother. Dominic, thank you so much for bringing up the question you just asked. 
When I was looking at the Catholic doctrine and this idea of purgatory, and my diction says these are place or a state of suffering inhabited by the souls of sinners who are expiating. That is, I think, to mean preparing for the wrongdoing before going to heaven. Uh, so you, you, when when we began these studies, you mentioned you quoted. Martin Luther King's argument or statement that says all men are born with sin from their mother's womb. So I was wondering, will this be the reason why Catholics baptize the children? Uh, and uh, so do they, do Catholics copy Martin Luther King's statement or argument about this children? Yeah. Or what's yeah. the okay. idea? Yeah. Okay. It, yeah, that's a good question. That's a great question. And by the way, Martin Luther King is the American. Martin Luther was the German reformer. So we're talking about the old Martin Luther. He's not a king. <laughs> now, Ooh, okay. yeah, it's, uh, it's just Martin Luther. Finish. Uh, now, he, the, and the Lutheran church just took the Catholic doctrine. So he followed the Catholic doctrine. He was he did not see himself as leaving the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church wanted him out, but he didn't want to leave. He wanted to to change the Catholic Church. Right? And so yeah. So it his doctrine comes directly from the Catholic Church. Yeah, not the other way around. Okay. Okay, and Adil, what? You got a follow up? Okay, Adil, unmute yourself. And it's I. It is it, a learning process. Okay, where you go? Are you hearing me, brother? Yes, we can all hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And hello, Brother Kate. And hello, Brother Martin Kenya. And Brother Dominic, greeting in the name of Jesus Christ. And happy to hear. Yeah, we're yes. very happy. So I feel, I feel blessed. Us. Yes, Brother, I feel blessed. Our greatest service is that people see Jesus Christ in your character. Uh-huh. Yeah, well... With... Yes, yes. You know, brother, I already told you, I am, I taken baptism before one month. Well, that's one. So I born again. So I am thankful to God that he hears and accept our prayer. Yes. So now I am very blessed to join you, brother Kate. Well, that's wonderful. That really is wonderful. Yes. Yes, brother. God plan. God plan to be is <clears throat> bless us with favor and over overflow blessings. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you very much Hallelujah. for joining us. I'm sorry you missed the first half, but Lord willing. Yes, yes, brother. You will brother, receive... our country time, I don't know, but I am late 20 minutes. Okay. What time is yes. it there now? This is the way to deal with it. What time is it there? 3 3 p.m. No, now. Is it 3 p.m. now? Yes, brother. Now 3 p.m. Okay, okay. I made a mistake. So you, it'll be I'll 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 put that on our on our on the in, in, in invitation. So 2 <coughs> p.m. is when we start. Hello, okay? brother. Brother Brother Dominic Sikio and Brother Martin. I hope you are well. So brother, okay. I want to I want to some talk share with you, and uh, I want to say you that uh, my brother wife is going to born baby after one month. Yes. Well, remember, remember, I I was, uh, we, I was praying with you uh, yesterday. Yes. 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 We okay, need your well, prayer. Got another question. Lord, giving us blessings. Okay, thank you. We've got another question, and it's Remember from Candace. 
Remember and Candace in your asks, when you say believer, are you including repentance? Correct? Yes. A believer, a, a Bible believer, a believer according to what the Bible says is one who is an obedient servant. And so to believe in Jesus Christ means repentance. Uh, and, and repentance means turning away from sins. Uh, you see, a believer is not someone who's going to believe in Jesus and continue sinning. Uh, he doesn't believe in Jesus. He might believe in something, but it's not in Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords. But a believer is going to turn around from sinning and follow Jesus. He's also going to be confessing Christ. A believer is a confessor of Christ. Not We're not talking about confessing sins, but he confesses the name of Jesus Christ. In, in uh, Romans 10, verse 10, it says, with the, uh, with the heart man believes, but with the mouth he confesses, resulting in righteousness. I'll say that again. With the heart man believes, but with the mouth he confesses, resulting in righteousness. So a believer is one who repents, one who confesses, one who baptize, is baptized, and one who continues faithfully. Faithfully. Belief and faith are the same. So a believer is one who continues faithfully. So if someone is baptized, if, if we'll say they believe in Jesus Christ, they repent of their sins, they confess Christ, they are baptized, but later they leave the faith, they're no longer a believer. And so they lose their faith. That's a very, very good question. Okay, my friends, our time is up. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Now, what I'll ask you to do is when you see my videos, share them. If you're on Facebook or anything, share the videos uh, on Facebook. You're more than welcome to do that. Get more people to see them. In, in, invite, invite your friends to come and, and join us as well. All they need to do to, to join us is, is send me an, their email address and I'll add them to the list. That's what I've done with Adele. Okay. Uh, Martin, you're unmuted. You're ready. I know you're ready to close in prayer for us. Lord, well, I thank you. Let's bow down and end with the word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. And Lord, we're so much grateful for offering us the new birth to show that you love us as much as anyone else was ever lived. We are grateful, Father, uh, that we, being graciously adopted into your eternal family, to enjoy your peaceful promises by obeying Christ's gospel. And Father, we know the hope of heaven is surely worth it all. Lord, we thank you so much for Brother Kate who has prepared these studies to share with us. He began by looking at life's most important question, what must we do to be saved? Father, we've seen your plan as it was from the beginning. In the scriptures that we've read. Father, we know that our sins separate us from you, dooming our souls to eternal torment. But we know that your only merciful way to be saved is by Jesus' gracious death on the cross for our sins. Father, we know that today we cannot separate uh, or take away baptism from your gospel and plan of salvation. So, God, we ask that please help us and give us the zeal and strength to continue preaching the same things to the world and sincere hearts that are seeking Christ. Thank you so much for Brother Adil, uh, Dominic, Brother Kate, uh, Sister Candice, and all with us uh, from the beginning. And we ask that, Lord, those who are going to watch these studies uh, uh, will be blessed and they will also be convinced to continue sharing these things with others uh, as we continue working with him. Thank you so much. And we ask that you keep us, bless us both physically and spiritually 
as we look forward to meeting again next week and study together. Please help us, Lord, as we look forward to meeting. The brothers and sisters, more to worship together. Please help us so that we can worship, give you worship that is done in truth and in spirit. Thank you so much and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. And it's a good good night from me. Good afternoon to the rest of you. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye for now. God bless you all. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye